I have taught for many, many years and um, taught middle school. And basically, my talent as a middle school teacher was really pissing off principals. Um, because I tended to do project-based learning, as Jack said, and uh, I didn't know that that's what it was. That's just kind of how my brain uh, worked. And so I'm going to share with you a bit about what I do at uh, the Harvard Graduate School of Education. When I got to Harvard, one of the things that I was most fascinated by um, was this learning brain theory they had. They debunked what's called the empty vessel theory, you know, that image that we always see of, you know, there's this kid with a brain and we just pour knowledge into them and they magically learn. Um, and they said, well, that's not actually true, right? It's, it's not this. Um, the learning brain is actually dynamic and it's variable and it's dependent on one's context, right? So all of the things happening on, around that child affect the way that they learn. And I thought, well, duh, you know, every teacher knows that. And so this, you know, kind of dynamic skills theory, right, this theory that you can understand this dynamic system, um, and it's not completely random, but it's actually quite brilliant, it has these patterns. And that's what I always thought I did as a teacher. You know, I would look at this room of, of children, and they had all of these wonderful things going on, and it was up to me. You know, I was this detective, and I had to figure out their pattern. And then together, we could make this beautiful music. Um, and so this, you know, dynamic skills theory, dynamic systems theory, understanding learning as a dynamic system kind of debunked the empty vessel theory, right? So this is brilliant. And I thought, oh, finally, someone put it in writing. What's interesting for me is that, you know, everything I do is about teaching. So I see the entire world as a teacher. I just kind of can't help it. And just as learning develops over time and it's a cognitive skill we're all born with, my argument is so is teaching. What we're doing right now is we're practicing an empty vessel theory of teaching. We kind of think if we just have all of this knowledge about learning and we pour it into the teacher, they will teach better. So let's spend all of our time finding everything we know, finding out everything we can know about learning we will pour it into the teacher's brain and they will teach better. I hate to tell you guys, but that's kind of what everyone did for children of dyslexia, right? Let's pour in this knowledge about how you should learn better. And if you don't do it, it's because you're stupid. It's because you're not motivated. It's because you're not listening. It's because you're not following. Not just because maybe you don't understand the way my brain works. Um, so I'm looking at teaching um, as an interaction. And I think this is something that we really haven't considered. I'm interested in figuring out what is teaching as a cognitive skill, as something that we're actually born with. We've not thought about teaching this way. I think a more appropriate definition of teaching is to understand it as an interaction. It is something that happens between a teacher and a learner. And as uh, I think it was Jack, Jack that you said, uh, if we could have more learning activities that are social interactive events. And I think that's where the success lies. And so my interest is about understanding teaching on that level. We actually don't have a definition of what teaching really is. We've done it the opposite way. We've said this is learning, this is the output that we want, this is how we're gonna define successful learning, and therefore, this is what teaching should be. We can learn everything in the world about learning, but we do not have robots in a classroom. We have really well-intentioned people who have their own brain. And unless they understand what is teaching and then what is my teaching brain, they will not understand how to manipulate and manage the interaction appropriately. So they can't really say, this is how I can create more successful interactions. I'm looking specifically at master teachers because on a developmental trajectory, I imagine they're at peak performance for that skill. Right? How have they mastered this? And how can I understand that to then look at a specific characteristic or function of the brain when we're teaching? Um, what I'm fascinated by is this idea that I believe teaching needs to completely be redefined and I'm on a mission to take back the definition of teaching.